everybody. I'm Laura. I'm Spencer. And we are married with board games. We are. It's been a little while. <laughs> it has. So if you're watching this not in real time, this is our first review in several months because we've been moving and whatnot. But uh, we're back and we're excited and we're in a new space. New space. New, new stuff, digs. new table. Yeah. Very cool new table and some new games to talk about. Yeah, so let's get right to it. What are we talking about today? Today we are talking about Sakura from Osprey Games by Reiner Knizia. Yes, and this is one of their newest, at least right now, and um, we were really excited to get this in the mail and, and check it out. Yes, and it has been a blast and it has been a hit. So let's just jump right into it. Right, and let's tell everybody real quick how to play. to Sakura. Sakura! There it is. All right. Cherry Blossom. That's what that means. Fantastic. Right. The Emperor is going to see the Cherry Blossoms. This is one time of year he comes out in public. Mm -hmm. So what we are trying to do is be the artist to capture his image as he's on his way to go and view the Cherry Blossoms. Mm -hmm. So we have the Emperor. He starts on this dark spot here on the board. He's going to wind his way through the garden. As he goes, he's going to hit three different scoring spots here. And so you want to be the closest to him when he hits one of those. And it's immediately. Yes. When he steps on that, yeah. you finish the card. Right. And then score. It's not that you let everybody mm -hmm. do their cards. It's right. That as soon as he hits it. And whoever's closest will get the most points, followed by the next, next, and so on and so forth. If you happen to be not one of those four, you don't get any points. The points are more over here on the last space. Right, exactly. So each player starts out with five tokens. You can acquire more. But the reason you start out with five is because if you bump into the Emperor, you will lose. Because, you yes, you are dishonored. You he, don't want to touch him. Ooh, he gets mad. So with your cards, you can either move yourself, another player, or the Emperor himself. Mm -hmm. You can do things like move a player into the Emperor or move the Emperor back into a player. Or you can leapfrog over all the other players and be the closest one. Yeah, you can never go in front of the Emperor, and you can't be on the same space as anybody else. But, again, you're trying to be as close to him as possible when he reaches one of those spots. Right. And you do that with your cards. And they look something like this. You've got a number on it that may or may not move the Emperor. You also have a number that moves you. And if you see a plus or minus, that means you can move forward or back that many. Mm -hmm. um, but it, there are some variations. This one uh, moves the person that's in last place up two spaces. And then you up three spaces. And again, when you're counting these spaces, you only count empty spaces. Right. You, you don't count spaces that another player is on. So mm -hmm. you can very quickly jump ahead of the pack if there are several in front of you. And if they're directly in front yeah, of you. Right. right. Uh, but that means you can very quickly bump into the emperor. <laughs> yes, you can. Another Quite thing, scary. Yeah. Another thing I want to point out on these cards is there's a number at the bottom. So what will happen is each round, everyone will secretly pick a card, put it down, and then once everyone's put it down, you'll reveal them and execute them in the order from lowest to largest uh, of the cards. Mm -hmm. And so just because you may think you're going to get your, to do your action first, you may not because someone might beat you to it. Right. I just played a two, but if Lara had played a one, of course, she would go before me. Mm -hmm. But I played a 51. Yeah, so uh, I get to go before her. Yes. But that's pretty much it for a two-player game. You play with a, a dummy player, mm -hmm. uh, essentially, and so you just draw a card for them. Also, when you're playing with uh, three or two players, the bridge is only one space. Mm -hmm. That's right. But when you're playing with four or more, the bridge is segmented into three spaces. Yep. But that's pretty much it. Be the closest to the Emperor whenever he gets to the scoring space and get the most points that you can. All right, so you got a closer look at this game. Let's talk about this look. Sounds great. Spencer, I know that there's something that you just always remark about every time we get this game. Well, well, not only the game, but again, I have to do it, say it every time that we do an Osprey game, and it's I just love, I can never get over the fact of the, the book style cover because it just stays with you, and uh, you never lose the box. Love that. Go and leave it there for a cat to go get in or something. <laughs> or a child to carry off. That is also true. <laughs> um, but I like that. The art is great. Um, but for me, the thing that really drives the game home and really works in, I mean, the theme is very light, of course, but the thing that, that really uh, makes the theme a little bit more realistic is the art on the cards of everyone jumping over each other. Jumping over each other or pulling somebody's collar, <laughs> horse, uh, horse collar, that's yeah. what that's called in football, and uh, different things like that. Of 
It's <laughs> taking each other out. It, it closer to the ever. I love it. It cracks you. It cracks me up just looking at it and just kind of envisioning as I'm doing the action with my person. Yes. Doing that that particular movement, and so I find that that was a very nice touch in the game of of adding that. You know, it's not like a cartoony art by any by any means, but the pictures depicted are very funny, humorous, and it adds a nice touch that, that everyone that we've played it with remarks on how much fun that artwork is. Well, I think it's very fitting in the style. It mm -hmm. is another one of these anime, uh, manga style art mm -hmm. uh, choices. And so it's very fitting in that, the physical, um, trying to one up each other. <laughs> and uh, it is, a, it's a representation of what we are not doing at the table. <laughs> yes. <laughs> this is what you were remarking before we started this. This would be a fun game to do a live version of. Oh my goodness. To have, have people like, actually. Actual players. Yeah. <laughs> yes, that would I would be love to be a part of that. Very cool. Uh, just, uh, I'll stay away from you. I won't grab you by the collar and pull you back. Better not. <laughs> so um, why don't we move on to what the what's going on here sure. with this game and what we think of how well it works as far as rules and mechanics mm -hmm. wise. Well, what I think is I like, first of all, I love programmed action, programmed movement games. It's great. Um, and this is, it's not technically that, but I kind of see it as a very, very, just a hint of that mm -hmm. because you're selecting a card with an action that you're programming technically regardless of what everybody else is doing you don't know exactly number one what cards they have and you don't know what they're going to play mm -hmm. and so you're kind of selecting this independent of what everybody else is doing right. which is are they going to move the emperor are they going to move me are they going to move themselves mm -hmm. That's, that is very hard to... Yeah, which is very similar to what you're doing in program action games. Mm -hmm. um, so that's cool. But the other thing that I like about it is the numbers. That's my favorite part. The order of the cards yeah, and the reveal. the order of who gets mm -hmm. to go and do their action when. I love that in Raptor. I mm -hmm. like how that's used. I like it in Mission Red Planet. I yeah. like how it's implemented here of... It's almost like everybody's waiting and holding mm -hmm. their breath and then reveal who, who, who has well, the lowest number. <laughs> exactly, because like in those games that you mentioned, it's great, but all players have the same numbers, right? Yeah. In this one, it's like one through 60 or something, and nobody's... Right, there no one, yeah, cards. There are no duplicates in the numbers. Now, there are duplicates in the actions. Right. And I'm sure if you went through it and figured out how many of each type of card there were, you could and like tried to you know, count, count cards, you could do that. But there's that uncertainty of, okay, I have an eight. Now the odds that someone's going to play a card that is released before mine are very low, but you still have okay. that. There's somebody else that has a one through seven. Yeah. Possibly. Yeah. Oof, yeah. Unless you're really paying attention to what's already been played before, mm -hmm. which you can if you want to be that strategic, but... Right. I don't. <laughs> I just like to pick a card and see what happens, really. But seriously, that's yeah. a lot of the fun of the mm -hmm. game. Yeah, but I mean, really, it's it's very simple. You've got a hand of cards, you play one, and everybody reveals at the same time, and you execute them in order. It's a very simple game. Right, and with that, the rules are very straightforward and mm -hmm. easy to understand. Yeah. Even for um, anyone to just walk up to the table and mm -hmm. just jump in and start playing. Right. Play a card, we'll look and see what number you are, and we'll tell you when to go. Yeah, well, and I think that, you going back to the look of the game, too, the cards look great, but they also have the symbology of the different icons of what each each action does, right? Yes. And that, like, that clicked with me very quickly. You do need the explanation first, I yeah. think. Yeah, 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 no, you're it's right. It's not intuitive, mm -mm. but once you've had the explanation of this means you move ahead mm -hmm. this many spaces, this means you move ahead how many players are in front of you, once you hear that, you'll get it, but it's not the kind of thing that you can just glance at it and, and intuitively know, no. well, that's what this means. Right. Um, such as, like, the green triangle and the red triangle, mm -hmm. of knowing that means the first, the person at the first of the line is going to go back, or the person at the end of the line is going to go forward. Yeah, some people sometimes initially think it's the reverse. I, I know, yeah. I did. Yeah. So, but once you get that down, it's very, it, it sticks with you. Yes. And... And I'll, I mean, I'll be honest, this game has clicked with so many people in so many different situations that we, we've we played this game so many times recently. A lot. And it's been a hit with everybody that we've played. Very cool. So like with that, mm -hmm. with we've played it with a lot of large groups. Yes. This game is a two to six player game. Mm -hmm. 
really recommended at the full player game. Absolutely. So like with a two player game, you have to play with an AI, a robot player, which we never really enjoy. No. Um, so we, this is not one that we recommend at two players. It's not really one that you're going to enjoy. I mean, you may like it, but to really get the chaos and just the uncertainty of what's happening, I mean, the, Who's going to end up where? Well, the positioning, yes, just from person, like just between two people, can change everything so much. Where you can force someone to move back, which you can cause some kind of chain rea chain reaction, which is multiplied by the number of people that you have playing. Mm -hmm. And for me, I love those kind those those times when, from one turn to another, the whole lineup is completely different. Yeah. So, like, never count yourself out. Number one, mm -hmm. which is really cool. Mm -hmm. But number two, if you like that kind of thing, the chaos and just the change, you definitely want to play this one as full player count at six. Now, I won't discount it at three or mm -hmm. four or five, um, but like Spencer says, I feel like there's more chances of bumping into the Emperor when you're at six. Yeah. Because otherwise, with less players, there's more chance for the Emperor to move ahead of the pack. Absolutely, yeah. So that there's a good wide space between the emperor and the, and the artists, that there might not be that much of a chance to bump into each other. But with just, with six players, I mean, it's a tight yeah. group. There. It's it's so much fun. And like, there'll be so many instances where everyone is literally one behind the other, behind the other, behind the other. It's a nice and little you, lineup. And, and you play the card <laughs> and go, no, yep. oh no. <laughs> yep, ah, uh, this person, if I had gone before this person, everything would have been yes. so much better. Yes. So yeah, th those are our thoughts on, on the player count itself. Um, Definitely. Fun game, don't recommend it at two. Highly recommend it at six. Yes. For sure. So with that, what we've been saying about not being able to determine what other yeah. people are going to do, if you're the kind of person who does not like program action, program mm -hmm. movement, and that not knowing what's going to happen, if that gives you just way too much anxiety, <laughs> probably not your game. Yeah, yeah. If you like control over every situation and you like to be, you know, have every, you know, your hand on everything that's happening in your games, this isn't going to be for you. No. <laughs> but on the flip side, if you do like, you know... Pandemonium. Pandemonium, exactly. <laughs> I mean, this really, in the time, so there several times that we've played it, has really got, given me a kind of like a party game atmosphere, sort of. I definitely like agree, from, especially because we've been capitalizing on playing it in large yeah. settings, or large group settings, so getting to play it at the full play yeah. account does feel like a party so game. So if you have that mentality of, yes, you want to win, but really, you don't really care, you know, then you can really have a lot of fun with it. Well, and the main thing is with this game, you don't know. Right. It changes so much. Mm -hmm. Somebody who's been at the back of the pack the whole mm -hmm. game well, come up to the front the last and, and get lots of prestige. What's, what's really cool is there are those three scoring phases, right? You've got that first one, the second one, and then the third one. So that you do have, okay, if you don't get any points in that first scoring round, the game's not over for you. No. You can catch up and go to that second one. Now, of course, if there's one person that's first or second in every single scoring round, then yeah, more than likely they're going to win the game. <laughs> but if you can play your cards right and get in there, and I, it well, really is... can make them bump into <clears throat> the emperor. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. If you can force the, the lead player to bump into the emperor or the emperor to bump into them, then yeah, uh, you can have a little bit more control in the situation. Mm -hmm. But overall... It's, it's great for that style of atmosphere. I think it's great that everyone plays at the same time. You're not waiting for this person to take your turn. You know, everyone puts a card down, you flip it over, and then you execute them in order. Well, and that's one of the things that I think is really helpful when it comes to teaching this game to new players, new gamers, um, of, of getting them into, bringing them into the hobby with something that's not one of those standards that they're used to. Mm -hmm. um, with with a game that everybody plays at the same time like that, mm -hmm. I think that helps so that they're not sitting there in downtime between turns, you know, second guessing themselves or, you know, worrying or, or getting annoyed with what's happening. Yeah. This this is so fast paced, the, the turns are so quick. Yeah. And it's again so straightforward that it's not gonna take a whole lot of critical thinking. Mm-hmm. 
And so uh, yeah, well, and I, I really think it's great for new gamers. And you mentioned the turns are quick. Well, because the turns are quick, the game is quick too. I mean, you can play this game at six players in 30 minutes or less. Yep. So again, it's it's great, a great filler, a great party game. Um, and it's, it's funny because the, the, the box kind of belies the, the style of game and it's not really a game you'd expect from Reiner Canizia, but I mean, it's, it's definitely been a hit with us. So uh, do you have anything else before we get to our ratings? No, I, I say let's let's do this. All right, so we have a new rating system that we'd like to introduce. We're married with board games. After it's, all. After all. So we got a one through five rating system. And starting with a one, actually, where should we start with a one or five? Yeah, one to five rating system, one being thanks, but no, mm. <laughs> hard pass. <laughs> yeah. Um, two is just friends. Just friends. <laughs> Three is, uh, they're going steady. Mm -hmm. Four is put a ring on it. Mm -hmm. Five is, I do. I do, yes. You're committed through and through right. to that game. Mm -hmm. So I'll <clears> let <throat> Spencer go first and okay. give his married board game rating for Sakura. It's tough. I mean, I'm wobbling between one, uh, two, two ratings. If I think of it in terms of, let's not look at the number, let's look at the words, right? I do versus... Uh, put a ring on it. Um, I'm going to say I do to Sakura. I'm in all in on this game. Um, I've never had a... Okay, add a six player count, right? At the large player count, I'm all in it. I do to Sakura. Um, if you're going to go at a three or four, maybe maybe uh, put a ring on it. And then as it gets lower, of course, uh, it, doesn't, it doesn't translate at all player counts. But in the times we've played it and the fun that I've had, I do. All right, well, mine is put a ring on it. Okay. Simply because I think you have to be with the right kind of people. Mm, okay. Um, what makes it fun in those large group settings is people who are willing to get into it. Right. Willing to laugh out loud and have fun with it. Not those people who get, oh, if only <laughs> they played that one. And, and then I could have, oh, or, or the person who's trying so hard to count the cards. Oh, yeah. Uh-uh. Yeah. No. I, I, we need people who are there to have fun, light, um, and get raucous and a little loud with it. Because I don't know how many times that we've played cards and going, oh, <laughs> yes. an eruption of the noise <laughs> yep. on the table. So mm -hmm. um, that's why my rating is put a ring on it. Excellent. Wonderful explanation. Wonderful. What about our dice tower seal? What do you think? I mean, I think with uh, with those two, I think that's... I think it's an excellence. Yeah, that's a seal of excellence. Yes. So Sakura gets a seal of excellence from Married with Board Games. Very good. Well, um, you know, we have also reviewed several other Osprey games here on the Dice Towers YouTube channel. So you can feel free to look those up as well. See what our thoughts have been on their other games and all those other cool games in the book boxes. Yes. You have anything else? Uh, just to say that my favorite one so far has been Escape from the Aliens in Outer Space. So if you're yes. going to start with one, check that one out. Check that out because that was number one on our five best outer space themed games mm -hmm. podcast yep. episode. We would love for you to check that out as well. Married with BG. If we've got nothing else here, uh, we're going to box this one up for now and we will catch you in the next review. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff, in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com.